Hello, welcome once again to Leto's Law. I'm Steve Leto, attorney at Law in the State of Michigan, where I'm practicing law for 27 years in the fields of consumer protection and lemon law. I often write about this stuff for places on the internet, and that's the classical opening that I got many people requesting lately. So that's what I used to say at the beginning of every single video. But lately, to save time, I've been shortening it up. So, <laughs> welcome back. Today we're going to talk about uh, those customer service surveys they send you. Do they do any good? And what's interesting is for many, many years of my life, I always assumed that the customer service surveys were being done basically just to make you feel like you have some more control over the consumer interaction situation. And I then had a situation where I became convinced that consumer surveys do good. I'm talking about after you've bought something or had service done on your car or something where you have an interaction where they send you the survey and they say, how did they do or how did we do? And it's kind of funny. I obviously am very familiar with these in the car industry because a lot of people who bring their cars into car dealerships for repairs, it'll say right on the repair order, you know, if you get called and asked about our service, please give us five stars. And if you can't give us five stars, please stop us now and tell us what we've done so that you will give us five stars. And it's kind of strange to me that they lobby <laughs> for a better vote like that. But, you know, they can do whatever they're allowed to do, I guess. But I can tell you that I actually had a situation that convinced me, like I said, that those customer surveys work. And it has to do with my cell phone. And I've been with the same cell phone carrier since I got my first cell phone about 25 years ago, I think it is. And to me, it's kind of strange that uh, that's happened. But what happened originally was I, ha I, I bought a cell phone and I had a carrier that carrier got swallowed up, the next carrier got swallowed up. And so like, I've never changed carriers, but they've changed on me. But as, as it is, I've been in essence with the same carrier since day one. Um, but again, I've always enjoyed the service. I get great service. I compare it to my friends. I listen to their complaints and I understand that my service is good. My prices are reasonable. So I'm happy with my cell phone service. And so a couple of years ago, I had my, my phone malfunctioned on me, and it was, I believe, beyond the time. So it wasn't, it wasn't a warranty issue. It was just simply a phone malfunction, which is a great excuse to get, go get another phone, right? So I, I take my old phone in, and I go into a store that is a store that's owned by a franchise, but it has the branding of the store and the, uh, the, the branding of the phone company on the outside. And I'm being very specific about this, but I'm not going to tell you the name of the phone companies. I don't think that's relevant. I really don't. But it was a it was a franchise store, not a company store. But on the outside, it does say the name of the of the phone company. So I really wasn't even sure when I went in there that that was the situation. I just knew that that was the closest store to me that serviced and sold those phones and that phone service. So I went in there, and it was a Saturday or a Sunday. I think it may have been a Sunday. And the place was kind of packed, but you know, I finally get served by a, a, a young man. And um, I forgot his name now, but I knew it at the time. And uh, he shows me a bunch of different phones that are available. And I pick one out. And we're standing at the counter and we're doing all this stuff. And, and he retrieves a, lunch, a bunch of stuff off my phone for me. And, and then he just turns around and walks in the back room and disappears. And a few minutes later, he comes back out. And I, I, I was aware of the fact that my phone had, my, you know, the phone I'd come in with had just walked into a back room. And so I said, hey, what, dude, uh, what about my phone? Like, what's going on with my phone? He goes, oh, he goes, um, we take it, we just took it back. And he goes, don't worry, we, you know, we, 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 we scrubbed it. We, we, you know, deleted everything off of it. And I said, well, the last few times I've brought phones and they did that right in front of me. And he goes, no, no, we do that in the back now. And this, you know, anytime something happens out of the ordinary, once in a while your brain says, hey, look, make a note just in case there's something going on here. And I said, but... You know, I'm a little nervous because there's a lot of important stuff on my phone. The guy goes, don't worry about it. He goes, you know, it, we're, we're, you know, we're good. We're good. So he gives me my new phone. And, you know, you, you know, the fun part about getting a new phone is you go home and you start putting in all the stuff. You got to load the apps and the emails and stuff like that. Something told me when I got home, I should double check some of the things that were on my phone before playing with my new phone. So I immediately logged on to my bank account and I was locked out of my bank account. Because of the number of unauthorized attempts where somebody had been using the wrong password trying to get into my bank account. I then went over to Twitter where somebody had posted a bunch of nonsense on my Twitter account. 
and Facebook where somebody posted a bunch of nonsense on my Facebook account. So I had to go in and delete all this stuff and change my passwords. But it was obvious that somebody in the back room at that store was playing with my phone before they scrubbed it. And so I'm, I'm, I'm a little annoyed by all this. So I get back in my car and I drive back to the store. And now I don't see the guy on the floor now, but there's a manager. So I asked, excuse me, are you the manager? And the woman walks in and she says, yes, I'm the manager. And I said, um, I have a problem. I go, I just bought this phone here like an hour ago. And um, one of your employees took it in the back, you know, my old phone back in the back. And immediately somebody tried hacking my bank account, my Facebook account, my Twitter account. And she goes, nope, nope. And I'm like, no what? She goes, it had nothing to do with us. I said, well, you understand the timing I just described to you. I, I, I came in here. My phone went in that back room, and she goes, it was already scrubbed. She goes, they, they, already, they, 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 they do a hard factory reset. She goes, they do that right in front of you. I said, no, the guy didn't do it in front of me. She goes, yes, he did. I go, how, how do you, I, I don't remember seeing you. You weren't here. And she goes, we film everything. We've got cameras up here. We film everything. I go, fine, show it to me. And she goes, no, I don't have to do that. And I go, look, <clears throat> I'm a good customer. I've been with this company for decades, literally. And this is the first bad experience I've had. I go, but let's face it. We know what happened here. I go, one of the goofballs in the back room was messing with my phone before it got scrubbed or cleaned, whatever you call it. But, but that, that's what happened. We know that's what happened. And she goes, no, that's not what happened. She turned around, she walked away from me. I'm thinking to myself, do I return the phone? Like, I mean, I already, I've already contained the damage. I changed all my passwords and stuff, but... I'm not sure what to do. So I'm thinking to myself, well, it's a Sunday. Um, maybe I, I can come back tomorrow or something. Who knows? So I'm going to think on this. So I go home, and I'm in my office, my home office, and I'm doing stuff here, and I'm making sure I've got all my passwords changed and stuff. And all of a sudden, I get an email. And the email comes in from corporate. And it says, customer satisfaction survey. Would you like to rate your recent experience at one of our franchise stores? Oh, you bet I would. <laughs> now, this is the thing. I've gotten those in the past, and I've ignored them. I've gotten them in the past and responded to them, but I never really knew if anything happened in response to a complaint you might put in a form like that. So they give you a bunch of things to rate on a scale of one to five stars. I believe it's a one to five system. And I give them zeros all the way down. And then it says, if you gave us anything less than fives, explain why. And so in the little box there, I type my story out. I'm an attorney. I can do it concisely. I type the story out. I hit send. Um, I believe it was about eight or nine minutes later. Maybe have been a little bit longer than that. But in my mind, it was a very, very short period of time. My cell phone rang. Now, I don't give my cell phone number to a lot of people. And uh, I look at it. Caller IDs, it doesn't show. But it shows as a local phone number. And my first thought, believe it or not, was that somehow word had gotten back to the store and they were, they were calling, yeah. Uh, so I picked the phone up and the guy goes, excuse me, um, Steve, how do you pronounce your last name? I go, Leto. And he goes, my name is, he tells me his name, and he goes, I am the owner of the store you just had the problem at. I go, okay. And he goes, I own three stores, three franchise stores. And he tells me where all three of them are. He goes, please, explain to me exactly what happened. So I tell him a story I just told you, but I include the names of the two people, the manager's name and the technician's name. And he goes, that is totally inappropriate. He goes, that manager is new, and he goes, and that employee is new. He goes, they're both gone. And I go, what do you mean? And he goes, they're both going to be fired today at the end of their shifts. I said, really? And he goes, yeah. He goes, I can't have people like that in my store. He goes, how long have you been with this carrier? I go, since I first got my first phone, in essence, since you know, 1994 or whatever it was. And he goes, I can't have that. He goes, just to let you know, he goes, he goes I get the reviews from my stores. And he goes, I read them. He goes, when I saw yours, he goes, I just, you know, something bad must have happened. He goes, I saw the description. And he goes, but hearing you tell it, he goes, it's even worse. He goes, I have no doubt that what you're telling me is true. He goes, I have no doubt that that technician tried to hack into your bank account. He goes, and I have no doubt that that manager is incompetent. He goes, they're both gone. Now, 
here's the thing. I know some people are going to hear this story and go, oh my God, Steve, you got people fired. That's horrible. That wasn't my goal. My goal was simply to get the attention of somebody above that level to let them know that they've got doofuses in their store treating good customers like that. The cell phone company makes a lot of money off me. And when I go into that store and buy stuff from them, that guy makes money off me. Okay? And when you have managers mistreating good customers and you've got technicians trying to steal from your good customers, that's a problem. I never once, however, said, you should be fired for this. When the woman just said, no, that didn't happen, walked away from me, I'm like, and I left. I didn't raise my voice. I didn't swear at her. I never said, I'm going to get you fired. You know, there's famous examples of people who are, you know, bigger in their own minds than they are in real life who want to say, I'm going to get you fired. I'm going to get you fired. I've never said that to a person in my entire life. And I wouldn't even wish it on somebody. But if anybody deserves firing, yeah, it's the guy who tried to hack into my bank account. I would guess. But anyways, just so you know this is true, that was a Sunday. I think I told you that already. So a couple days later, I decided to get some accessories for my phone. I'm not sure if I was going to get a, a belt clip maybe because I wear it when I'm running. Uh, it may have been I was buying a, another screen protector or it may have been I was buying like the cigarette lighter, something. I was buying, but I was buying stuff, okay? I go back into the store on a weekday and I look around and I don't see either of those people there. But I remember, I know their names. So I, I woman walks up, can I help you? And I said, yeah, sure, you can help me. And I, I showed what I'm looking at. I said, oh, by the way, I go, is so-and-so here? And she goes, uh, the manager? I go, yeah. And she goes, uh, no, no, she's not. I go, oh, when will she be in? Woman goes, oh, I'm sorry. She, she no longer works here. <laughs> I said, well, she moved to one of the other two stories, stores. Because I understand that these three franchises are all owned by the same person. She goes, no, no, no. She was let go. And I go, well, what about, and I named the guy, the technician. I go, is he still here? He helped, he helped me last time. She goes, no, he was let go the same day. So, I did actually go into that store a few more times down the road and bought other stuff there. And I'll tell you right now, the phone call that guy made to me saved my business. I would never have gone there again. I might have changed carriers because of that. Uh, but that saved my business. But the manager and the technician both got fired. And they deserve to be fired. Okay? But I just want to make sure it's clear. I didn't ask for them to be fired. That was simply what happened to them as a result of their actions. And so it's funny because I've, I've had people tell me, they say, Steve, you know, there's dealerships out there that live and die by those reviews. I never quite put that much stock in them because, I mean, if you handle hundreds and hundreds of transactions and all these people get reviews, you and I both know it's going to be averages, right? One outlier is not going to destroy you, I wouldn't think. But like I said, I was hoping when I filed my complaint that it would be an outlier where somebody would at least look at it. That's all I was kind of thinking is just, will somebody look at this review? And, and, and just read it and take it seriously. And, you know, I've had so many bad experiences with corporations where you call up and complain or stores or businesses where they do nothing. They do zero. And, you know, they'll tell you that in customer service, and I, I admit I I'm, I'm don't work in customer service, but I would suspect this is true, that one of the primary things that you do as a customer service person, entity, you're dealing with customers and the public, is you want them to at least think you're listening to them, whether or not you are. Pretend you listen. Pretend you care. When, when, when the manager came out to me and said, what's the problem? And I said, hey, look, someone just tried to hack into my... She shouldn't go, no, didn't happen. She should have said, really? Let's, let's, let's think about this now. Let's go find your phone. Let's go find the guy. Let's go look at the videotape that we claim we have. Okay? None of that. No, no, no. And, and if, if you had to go back to that day and time and say, Steve, what, what was happening there? Well, the store was busy. And the manager was too concerned with, how am I going to make money? How do I get more people through here? How do we get the money out of the pockets of these people? Which, by the way, is one of her jobs. But another one of her jobs as a manager, I would guess, is to deal with the problems that arise. And one of the problems that arises is one of your employees is trying to steal from your customers. That's a problem. So she should have listened to me and taken me seriously. And she should have looked into doing something with the guy who tried to break into my bank account. So like I said, she got canned, he got canned. Uh, I can't say I feel sorry for him, but I didn't ask to have them fired. So that's what makes me not the bad guy in this story. But that was the one occasion that I know of where a customer 
survey actually worked out. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye-bye.